When an argument between a female rapper and her manager escalates, things would quickly turn deadly. With the rapper firing multiple times at the manager and killing him. And then, while trying to escape, the manager's driver runs over the rapper. The rapper later claimed that she did it in self-defense. But was that true? Welcome to Trapdoor Crime. Let's find out. Female rapper filmed murdering her manager. This footage involves 27-year-old Kevani Hicks, an aspiring female rapper who goes by the stage name Key Vani. She has also listed herself as the CEO of Pretty Thug Music. She was caught on camera killing her manager in the middle of the street after an argument. The incident happened around 1.30 a.m. on October 9, 2023 in South Florida, and Key Vani was seen on surveillance footage stepping out of a white Lexus before the driver followed her. The two went to the back of the car where they started arguing over something inside of the trunk. Things quickly escalated and became physical, with the two throwing hands at each other. Then a second man, who was later identified as her manager, is seen getting out of the back door of the car and joining in the fight against Kivani. The two men manage to overpower her and pin her to the ground as Kivani fiercely fights them off. Minutes later, the footage shows the driver trying to pull the manager away from her. Kivani then collects her things and starts to walk away. The manager follows her and seems to be yelling something at her before turning and heading back towards the Lexus. That's when Kivani pulls out a gun from her handbag and begins firing in his direction. Both men duck for cover, with the manager falling behind the parked blue car. But this didn't stop Kivani. She goes after him and can be seen firing multiple times at him at close range. The other man got into the Lexus and was seen slamming the car into Kivani before driving off. Then Kivani got up and ran down the sidewalk out of the view of the camera, but she wouldn't go far. Responding officers found the manager with multiple bullet wounds. He was rushed to the hospital, where he later died. Kivani, who was found a few blocks from the scene, was also taken to the hospital with blunt force injuries. She told the police that she opened fire because she feared for her life. A police report from the incident read, as the defendant began to walk away from the victim, the victim began yelling threats at her and his voice grew closer. The defendant stated she was in fear due to the victim's size and upon hearing the victim yell, I'll kill you with one hit. She said that's when she turned and opened fire on him, but he appeared to be angrier and was positioning himself to lunge at her, at which time she began firing again. The police report said that when Kivani was shown the video footage showing her firing at the man as his back was turned toward her, she maintained she was in fear for her life as the events unfolded. It's a case that if she had shot him when he was her, she probably could have been justified, but the fact that he was retreating at the point that she started firing at him, um, it becomes where she committed the offense that she's being charged with. While she didn't say what the argument was about, a family member who had set up a GoFundMe page for her said the two men in the video had assaulted her multiple times. We know that based on her statement that he, the, the victim in this case, is her manager, and she says that she's a singer, um, but we don't know what led to this argument. After she was released from the hospital, she was arrested on second-degree murder charges. She pled not guilty to the charges with her lawyer saying that it was a clear case of self-defense. However, the prosecution argued that this did not constitute self-defense, given that the victim had his back towards the accused when she started firing. The prosecution said that Kivani had the opportunity to walk away, which she didn't take, but resorted to pulling out her gun and firing at the manager. Initially, Kivani was denied bond with the judge saying that while she did have a very good self-defense claim, there was probable cause for second-degree murder because the victim was walking away and she sh** him after he was on her. However, she was later granted a $50,000 bond and placed on house arrest until the next hearing. After she was released, Kivani made a post on Instagram thanking her fans and supporters, saying, I'm finally home after experiencing something so traumatic and life-changing. I have three broken ribs and bruises all over, so I'm currently healing and getting rest. I just want to personally thank everyone who supports me and knows that I'm not the horrible person some are claiming I am. Now, as shocking as that footage was, 
this is not the only murder that has been caught on camera. Law enforcers gunned down a woman on camera. In this footage, sheriff's deputies are seen gunning down a woman at a condo complex after she attacked a police officer with a knife. The incident occurred on March 3rd, 2022 in a condominium complex located in Little Italy in San Diego. Deputy Jason Bunch from the San Diego Sheriff's Office had gone to serve an eviction notice to a 47-year-old woman named Yan Lee. In the body cam footage, you can see the deputy knocking on the door and ringing the bell at Lee's fifth floor condo. When she opens the door, Bunch confirms her name and hands her the papers. But things quickly get heated when the officer notices that Lee was holding a butcher knife. What is it? Are you Yan Lee? Uh, yes. Okay, here's a notice to evict. Okay. What? It's your notice for. Put the knife down right now or I'm gonna f Put your knife down. Put the f knife down. No, put, put the knife down right now. No, put, you got put the that. knife down right no, now. You got that. How do I know that I'm not an intruder? 15 out of 5, 1 at gunpoint. Code cover. Officer Bunch keeps her at gunpoint, continuously yelling for her to put the weapon down, alternating between calling it a knife and a gun. Put the gun down, ma'am. I'm gonna you. Put the gun down. How do I know you Put the gun down or I will shoot you. Try to enter my apartment. 15 Adam 5, code cover. Put the gun with a knife. Put the gun down right now. You're the yoga. Put the gun down right now. Now, drop the knife. I'm holding the knife, ma'am. Drop the knife, ma'am. Your job, your You will get if you come at me with that knife. I will you. I'm not afraid. Do you understand that? I'm not a cop. Okay, I will you. Do you understand? Put the knife down. How did you get in? Put the knife down. How did you get into my building? Put the knife down. How did you get into my building? I walked in. Put down the knife right now. The standoff went on for a while with Officer Bunch continuously asking Lee to put the knife down and Lee accusing him of impersonating a police officer. She then demands to see his badge and throws the paperwork into the hallway before slamming her door. Why is your badge? You will be shot, do you understand? Where that? is your badge? Ma'am, shh, drop the knife. You have another image of your badge. Don't. And you're poor, okay? Drop, just drop the knife. Where is your badge? Drop the knife, please. Don't make no, me do I'm this. No, no, I'm not dropping. Drop the knife now. Hi, I'm a fake police officer. I am not a fake police it's officer. Talking, it's drop, talking. drop the knife. Drop the. Now, while Lee was in the wrong for holding a knife at a law enforcement officer, she never showed any indication that she had intended to attack him with it. She also had every right to ask for identification and remove herself from the situation when things got heated. She was already on the edge, and the officer did not help the situation by becoming really aggressive and threatening to open fire on her. The video resumed eight minutes later when Bunch's supervisor arrived at the scene and tried to de-escalate the situation by talking to Lee through the door. But Lee did not budge. Miss Lee, Sheriff. Sheriff's Department. Excuse me, Sheriff's Department. Can you open the door, please? What had started as a simple eviction notice soon turned deadly when several deputies and police officers with dogs arrived at the scene and prepared to enter Lee's unit. Authorities said that while they were waiting for backup, they learned that Lee had threatened the complex manager and a maintenance worker with a knife the day before. This is what was reported by the news in San Diego. Based on this reported crime, there was a threat to public safety. This is also probable cause to arrest Lee for assault with a deadly weapon. However, they never mentioned whether the condo complex personnel had reported the alleged knife threat earlier, or whether law enforcement had sought a warrant or needed one to enter Lee's apartment. Body cam footage from several different officers showed them entering the condo with a key. The first deputies are seen holding less lethal weapons as they announce themselves as members of the sheriff's department. In this video, Lee is behind a bedroom door as deputies order her to come out with her hands up and dogs can be heard barking in the background. The sound of several weapons being fired rings out several times but these less lethal rounds don't seem to be effective on Lee as she charges at them with a knife. 
A chaotic scene unfolds as the officers backpedal into the hallway, with three of them falling to the ground over each other. Lee then appears with the knife pointed in front of her. The video doesn't really show what happened after, but the video says, Interestingly, the police would not release the name of the officer who was allegedly jabbed in the chest. He was able to walk out of the building and was taken to a nearby hospital for treatment and released later that day. Now, the video received a lot of mixed reactions from the public, with some saying that the officers used excessive force on Lee. A civil rights lawyer from Los Angeles said, This is just a classic example of unnecessary escalation of a conflict resulting in a lawful shooting. The deputy's job was done. He's a process server. You serve the process and then leave. The lawyer also questioned whether the alleged threat against the complex employees the previous day was a lawful basis to enter the condo. That's information they learned after service of the eviction notice was complete. They hadn't gone there to investigate an ongoing call for an assault with a knife. The lawyer said the video showed him, a woman in crisis who is losing her home and who is aggravated by the situation unnecessarily by law enforcement. However, the DA said that the shooting was justified and that the officers had reason to believe that using deadly force was needed to stop the threat of death or serious injury. Do you agree with this? Let me know in the comments. Man murders 16-year-old girl in public. In this next segment, a 20-year-old man from Delhi, India, brutally murdered a 16-year-old girl as people watched and walked by. The horrific scene happened on May 28, 2023. The man, who would later be identified as Sahil, had apparently been dating this underage girl. And on this fateful day, the girl was going to a birthday party of a friend's son when Sahil attacked her. Footage of the gruesome murder shows the deranged man repeatedly jabbing the girl and then dropping a huge rock on her head. And his reason for doing all this is reportedly because the girl wanted to break up with him. But what makes this even more disheartening is that you can see people watching on the sidelines, with some even passing by and going about their business as the defenseless young girl is being assaulted and murdered. None of them even tries to stop the sicko. The deranged killer was later caught hiding at his aunt's place, which really shows how cowardly some of these killers are. Because if you have the courage to take someone's life like that, you should be prepared to face the consequences of your actions. The killer reportedly confessed the crime and showed no remorse for his actions. The gruesome video went viral on social media with many expressing their anger and outrage. Hashtags such as Delhi murder and Delhi crime were trending on Twitter along with Shabad Deri, which is the name of the place where the crime happened. In a tweet, Delhi chief minister described the murder as very sad and unfortunate, saying a minor girl is brutally murdered openly in Delhi. The criminals have become fearless and there's no fear of the police. The Delhi Commission for Women was quoted as saying, the crime was captured on CCTV. Several people saw this but did not pay heed. Delhi has become extremely unsafe for women and girls. The chairperson of the National Commission for Women also said that the crime showed the insensitivity of the people in Delhi. There were several people at the spot when the incident took place, but no one took any action to help the girl. This case should be heard in a fast track court and the verdict should come as early as possible, she said. The girl's family was understandably devastated by the news of their daughter's gruesome murder. Her devastated dad said, I saw my daughter lying on the ground with her face to the ground. Her organs had come out and her head had been pushed in. She lay there lifeless. There was no point in taking her to the hospital. It angers me to know that no one helped my daughter. If they had helped her, she would be alive today. I also heard that the bystanders were busy filming videos of the incident. Even if they had screamed, it would have helped my daughter. The girl's mother called for the ultimate sentence for her killer, saying that he should die the same way that her daughter did. I want penalty for him. He must die the way my daughter died. What do you think about these cases? 
Which among the three do you think is the most shocking? Let me know in the comments section. You've been watching Trapdoor Crime. Don't forget to like and subscribe for more content.